and welcome to the third annual P Flag Parent Day, honoring the parents leading with love and showing up with support for LGBTQ plus people of all ages. P Flag is an iconic organization born out of the love one mother had for her gay son. Today, 50 years since its founding, when a loved one comes out, P Flag is the first stop on the journey for families needing support. When a person might not understand a new word or concept, P flag is there with education and when legislative advocacy is needed, P flaggers get off the curb and take action. Today we'll hear some of the stories of these proud and passionate advocates who are driven by courageous love to do this important work. We hope we'll inspire you to follow P flags lead just like the family in our first story. Mindy and Lily Freeman are a P flag parent and child who support LGBTQ plus people and their families in their local community in Pennsylvania, speaking out against book bans. ABC News' Steve Osunsami recently sat down with the family to learn more about their journey and about PFLAG. Welcome to episode 11 of Project Uncensored. Mindy Freeman loves her 16-year-old daughter, Lily, like she does any of her other children and doesn't enjoy hearing that she's a fabulous parent. Welcome to episode six of Project Uncensored. But when she stood right behind her youngest child with both feet, and said yes to recording videos to fight book bans in their Philadelphia suburbs. And when she kept marching to the front of their local school board, defending students just like her own daughter. Our family knows the truth because we are the truth. This mother won a special place in the hearts of every child and frankly, every former child whose parents weren't as accepting. We always say we, the least interesting thing about me is that I'm trans because it, it really is the least interesting thing about me. Tell me about that first conversation. I told my sisters first and they were like, okay, so like, you're probably gonna, you should probably tell mom and dad. I mean, they said like they'd love me no matter what, but it was really once I was in elementary school that I felt that, okay, this is the time, this is how strong my feelings are. I need to express this to my parents. And we didn't have all the answers at the time. And my spouse and I said, we love you. We gave her a hug and a kiss. And that was the extent of the conversation at the time because we knew at that moment that's where our learning journey was beginning. The thing you said, you didn't have all the answers. Neither of you had all the answers. Correct. And it really wasn't we love you no matter what because that's sort of like if someone steals cookies from the cookie jar. It's not like right. you did something wrong. That's the biggest thing that we want to get away from saying. We were there to listen and we were there to learn. I love you. I love you too. I'm so like, so lucky to have her. It's really the dream of anyone whose lived experience includes any letter in the LGBTQ alphabet to have a parent who loves them this unequivocally and fights for them this strongly. Lily Freeman felt that back in the fourth grade, long before she felt safe enough at home to step out publicly at protests over new library policies at public schools. I'm a student at CB East and a transgender female of Jewish heritage, here with my family who loves and supports me. She and her parents are fighting for books because it was this book about a transgender fourth grader that helped them understand the journey that they now share. And it was one of their daughter's teachers who encouraged them to read it, which wouldn't have happened today under new rules where the book is now banned from school and teachers aren't allowed to make this same suggestion. Books did not turn my daughter trans just like it didn't turn her eyes from brown to blue. She I mean, to say that. because it's true. We highlight LGBTQ plus children's literature. So we created a Instagram account called Project Uncensored, where we highlighted LGBTQ plus children's books, many of which have been either banned or challenged in schools. We have the privilege of having such an accepting family, but we really try to speak for the ones that can't speak or that don't have that accepting family. It's why Mindy Freeman, who's also a former grade school teacher, took her story and her daughter to lawmakers in Washington. No book made my child become transgender. And it's no accident or surprise that she's a proud member of PFLAG, a national support group for LGBTQ parents. When did you join PFLAG? It was like six, the end of end elementary of, school. Of so elementary school, so probably, you know, fifth, sixth grade. I had reached out to someone personally who recommended PFLAG. We weren't sharing too much with the elementary school at the time. Lily wanted to keep things in our immediate family at the time. And what I loved about PFLAG, 
And because I feel like it matched up with how we felt as a family. Their mission is lead with love. And I feel like I could cry thinking about that because when you walk into PFLAG, it's a non judgmental place where not, they support obviously LGBTQ individuals and those who love them. And you go to the meeting and it's, it could be grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles. And I remember I started sharing and I started to cry. They handed me the tissue box and I wasn't crying because I was sad. I was crying because this was the first time I was getting everything out in an atmosphere with people that weren't my immediate family. And I was scared in a way because I was, I wanted to make sure the world was as accepting of Lily as we were in our family. And that is what I was scared about. And it, I just felt like so loved being there. That was it, that was the start of it. And then I just couldn't stop going to these meetings. And what was your take on it? I saw the importance in it and I saw how it really benefited her. And yeah, I love seeing that. It was another mother who was also a former grade school teacher who started PFLAG in the first place back in 1973. Jean Manford was way ahead of her time when she spoke up in the papers for her gay son after he was beaten within an inch of his life by homophobes in New York City. That same summer, she marched with her son, Mr. Morty Manford, in what was then known as the Christopher Street Parade. And when she held this now historic handmade sign calling for the parents of gays to unite in support of our children, PFLAG was born. She and her husband are seen here in a 1974 interview explaining themselves. Uh, this is something that happened, and this is Morty's life. This the is the way God made, the, made him. Uh, it's the not a matter of choice. This is Morty. We love him. Why should we stop loving him? Because uh, something, he suddenly tells us that he's, uh, in one way, he's different. He has different preferences than we do. My reaction, of course, was to blame myself either for doing something wrong or failing to spend enough time with him when he was young. Since, of course, I've learned better. A lot of people might be saying, gee, it's one thing for her as a mother to feel strongly about this matter about her son, but, but why support him to the point of marching with him? What's the importance of that? Because I love my son and I want him to know how I feel. I want him to know that I would do anything. You know, I'm not a martyr. My, son, my husband and I like to live a good life and we enjoy going out together. But our children's lives are important, and I will do anything within my power to see that their future is good, to make them know that I feel this way about them. Over the years, and especially during the AIDS crisis of the 1980s, the parents of PFLAG became legendary. And to this day, grown folks still cry when these loving parents march through pride parades across this country. A new survey this year of more than 28,000 LGBTQ plus youth shows that parents like the Freemans and the Manfords still aren't as common as people might think. Less than 40% indicated um, that their household was affirming. So we have like over 60% of our youth letting us know that they don't feel like their, their home, their families, their caregivers are affirming their LGBTQ status. And affirming parents make a difference. In another large survey, about 12% of children who say their parents failed to stand up for them when they were being mistreated report that they thought about taking their own lives. That number went down to 8% with children who felt their parents did better. The results showed that kids who say their parents talk with them respectfully about their identities or ask them questions about how they're being treated at school were about 40% less likely to attempt suicide. We all do better when we love and supporting them helps them do better all around in school with friends and feeling confident and resilient. Rachel Fitzpatrick is a parent and one of the leaders of Mindy Freeman's PFLAG group in the Philadelphia suburbs. PFLAG is all about supporting so this is a great place to talk about um, what you're going through in, in a safe space in a safe environment and not put that burden on your child. Today, mom is helping her daughter deliver donated books that are banned by their schools to small public libraries where they hope someone who needs can come and read. Hi. Hi. Mindy Freeman says she still doesn't have all the answers, but says she'll have a better chance finding them 
as long as she keeps leading with love. I don't want you to think that I've been perfect. And so I feel like be there for your kid, love your kid, have open communications with your kid. Know that they can come to you. When you become a parent, there's no manual out there. And this was just like another experience in that learning journey. Lily and Mindy Freeman followed Jean Manford's lead, taking action by opposing book bans and encouraging people to read with love. You can visit pflag.org slash readwithlove to learn more. PFLAG supports families and parents with the goal of making sure every LGBTQ plus person feels safe, celebrated, empowered, and loved. This work is often centered in making schools safer for LGBTQ plus youth. PFLAG, New York City, its first chapter, runs one such program which promotes inclusion, understanding, equality, and nonviolence in New York City schools. When I was coming out as a young teen, I felt like I was the only one. I felt like I was the only one going through it. No one was speaking about it in my school, so it was very isolating. But to have someone come in and say, hey, I identify the same way you do, and I'm successful, and I'm happy, and you will be too, that would have made a huge difference for me. It would have helped me come out earlier. PFLAG is doing the most educational outreach of any community organization that does work in schools in the, in the five boroughs. When a lot of uh, LGBTQ organizations use statistical information to educate, which is also really important, nothing changes hearts and minds like personal stories. The Safe Schools program is an education program that provides uh, workshops on allyship to K through 12 students, teachers, and families. And why do I come to schools and tell you my life story? And it's all done through personal storytelling. It changes the school culture immensely. It decreases bullying. LGBTQ plus youth are facing legislatively and otherwise an onslaught of horrors, honestly, um, having their rights stripped away from them. If there's anything I want y'all to get from this whole presentation, it is allyship. Having that education right now is absolutely critical. I think that seeing grown-up LGBTQ plus people make such a heavy impact. They can see that not only can they grow up and, and survive and live, but that they can thrive. And seeing that just means the world to them. And so that's what means the most to me. Before I worked at the Department of Education, I was part of the Safe Schools program at PFLAG NYC. I was a community speaker who shared my, um, I shared my personal coming out story to students. So to be able to impact that on a higher scale, it is a full circle moment. How can I be a friend, an ally? Every little thing counts. Uh, it might seem small to you, but one small piece of allyship or action could save someone's life that day. If you are in the New York City area, you can visit pflagnyc.org slash schools to learn more. And to learn more about PFLAG National Safe Schools work, go to pflag.org slash safe schools. PFLAG isn't just there for LGBTQ plus youth, but for queer people of all ages, including adults and their families. Let's meet TJ, who emigrated from Jamaica and found a home and family in Philadelphia and in PFLAG. All right, kiddos, can we come over to the table, please, and start reading? Basically, my story started in a little island of Jamaica. I knew something was different. I just didn't know what it was. I just did not feel comfortable wearing dresses or skirts or anything of that nature. Every Wednesday, we get pancakes. I think I heard the term somewhere, and I decided to look it up and see, what does this mean? being transgender. I thought to myself, this, this sounds like what I'm going through. I migrated here in 2012, and I started the process of taking testosterone, and I have continued to take my medications. You want daddy to read for a little bit? When I okay. met my wife, it just felt like time stood still. Chapter eight, permanent record. We have our two little kiddos, and we have a baby on the way. We did IVF, and she is carrying my eggs. As a trans person, it's very difficult because you have to stop taking testosterone, but it paid off, and it's not impossible for trans men to have kids the way they choose or the way they see fit. What time is it? Is it time to go? 
When I first moved here to Philadelphia, I needed something that felt like I was making an impact. Like that. <laughs> so I got introduced to, to the PFLAG chapter here in, in, in Philadelphia that was almost non-existent. Um, so we decided to, to bring that back up. We tend to have fundraisers or events to try to raise money so that we can provide more for the LGBT community so that we can show them that they are not alone. Have fun in school today, okay? Having a safe space is one of the biggest assets that we can have. Celebrate LGBTQ plus affirming parents and parenting people with a gift to PFLAG National. Text PFLAG to 41444 or visit pflag.org slash parent day to give. So far in 2023, 533 anti-LGBTQ plus bills have been introduced in state legislatures across the country, from bans preventing transgender and non-binary kids from accessing health care, changing their birth certificates, and joining their friends playing team sports, to the so-called don't say gay or trans bills and bans on drag performance. But the threats to LGBTQ plus people and those who love them aren't just legislative, but also physical and immediate, even in states that many people consider to be safe, like California, and in places that many people find refuge in, like churches. Shards of glass cut the peace of the sacred space at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in central Fresno. Church volunteers spent Tuesday afternoon covering doors and windows that had been shattered by vandals hours earlier. It's unfathomable how this kind of thing can happen. Our Saviors is a reconciling in Christ congregation, which are Lutheran churches that welcome all people, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. Pastor Bill Knezevich says that's why his church was targeted. He believes the Vandals were members of the extreme right group, the Proud Boys, because they protested at a family-friendly drag show the church hosted in December. We have gotten threats from them, over since then and they did say that they were going to do something and their little stickers out there their calling card from my understanding it's a, a sticker that might have had some type of involvement with the um the proud voice um at this point in the investigation is too early to tell if that sticker and the vandalism are uh, related but she says detectives are searching for evidence and hoping anyone with information related to the crime comes forward we're not gonna you know run away we're going to stick it out. Pastor Knezevich says he's committed to keeping his members safe within the walls of the church. I'm a proud black queer woman. Dr. Sigrid Horton is studying to become a pastor and says she found a home in Our Saviors. This is what it feels like to know that you are welcome and um, anyone is welcome that wants to be welcome that walks in the door. Until the vandals are tracked down. Church leaders say they will continue holding service and holding onto their faith. So I think we're living out what Jesus said, feed the whole, uh, poor, uh, give drink to the thirsty, and always be re reaching out to those who are marginalized. This kind of perseverance, love, and hope extends down the California coast from Fresno to the San Gabriel Valley. That's where a very special chapter of PFLAG, PFLAG San Gabriel Valley, Asian Pacific Islander, is reaching out and supporting another marginalized community. Our PFLAG San Gabriel Valley API chapter is celebrating 10 years as a safe Asian LGBTQ ally community. And our chapter here in San Gabriel Valley is specific to the Asian Pacific Islander community. When I became an advocate and, you know, I couldn't just love my child in a bubble. We often hear that when an Asian child comes out of the closet, the Asian parents go into the closet because they don't know where they could talk about these things. But that's why we exist. I'm um, current president of this chapter and this chapter saved us. I'm so grateful. Typically we sit in a circle and we all vocalize our particular struggle. So it feels a little safer to do so when you see people who look like you. When my child was around 11, 12 years old, they started to go really silent. And I thought at first, is this a junior high thing? They were suffering severe anxiety and depression and it led to suicidal ideation. When they got to high school, the gender question came out, my child researched and everything started to fall into place for them. 
she came out to me as transgender female. I didn't expect this. Like so many fears flooded me. And so thankfully I knew somebody at this particular chapter. I was sobbing when I came in, but these parents are so gentle. I, I went through a whole learning journey. I always say that I'm the blessed one because she opened my eyes up to a whole new world, a whole new community of love and acceptance that I never knew possible. PFLAG Connects Communities is a program that provides safe virtual meetings for people with common backgrounds and experiences. It includes communities for AAPI families, Latino families, Black and African American families, and military families. If you or a loved one from one of these communities are in need of this support, visit pflag.org slash connects dash communities. PFLAG has 18 chapters in the state of Texas. Together with PFLAG National, they are working to protect families who have been the subject of child abuse investigations for supporting their trans kids. Let's meet Lisa and Jeff Stanton, a family in Houston taking on the fight alongside PFLAG. Our family is just a normal, everyday American family. My husband and I have been married for 18 years. We um, have twins who are 12 years old. We enjoy spending time doing family movie nights. Here's when we were at the water park at uh, San Antonio? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one thing that might make us a little different than other families is that one of our twins happens to be a transgender girl. Oh, here she is. Oh yeah. So cute. From the time she could talk, told us who she was and we really didn't understand what it meant to have a trans child or really that, that children could be trans at first. But once we became educated about it and we allowed her to be her authentic self, she's, she's thrived. I know when Maya was younger, she wasn't always the, that joyful kid that we see now. Maya has a lot of special qualities. I think I wanna mention that the fact that she's trans is probably the least special thing about her. It's also important that people understand the unique perspective and, and the lessons that trans people have to teach us. She's helped us to understand what it means to live as your authentic self and not to care about what societal expectations are. Here's Halloween. This is a cute one. She was Cruella DeVille and we were her Dalmatians. <laughs> I think it's critical to support LGBTQ youth and has been a game changer for, for Maya. And also the way we, we support her is just by listening to her. The future for Maya is, is unlimited. And I think we were committed to whatever thing that brings her joy and happiness. Um, just like any parent, we want to give her those opportunities. And I think it's really important to mention also like how brave Maya is. Having to be an advocate for herself and for the trans community, she's learned how to speak out on behalf of um, others who are marginalized in this uh, world. And I think she's going to always be a champion and an advocate for other people. And I'm really proud of, of her for that. Oh, here were all these great ones at the Capitol. PFLAG is an amazing organization that um, has a long history of standing up and supporting LGBTQ youth and their families and providing the support for caregivers and families so that they know how to best support their children. A message that I would have for other families that have LGBT youth in them is to stay strong and to keep fighting and to continue supporting your child and loving them and allowing them to be exactly who they are. Families like the Stantons are finding themselves in increasingly harmful situations in almost every state across the country. To learn more and to find helpful resources, visit pflag.org slash join the fight. The art of drag has been at the center of a lot of controversy in the last year, with anti-drag laws already in the books in three states. Other states are also considering anti-drag bills, including North Carolina. Let's meet Stormy Day, a drag artist from Raleigh who recently held a story hour at Rofua Book Cafe in Durham. Stormy is working to destigmatize drag while encouraging kids to read with love. How's everybody doing today? Thank you so much for being here with me. My name is Stormy Day. So are y'all ready for a book? 
a healthy society is based off of children. This book is called The Mother of a Movement. Things that people find uncomfortable, they put a magnifying lens on it, and I have felt the refraction from that lens very much so in the recent years. Come on, does anyone discover themselves? Maybe when we play or you learn something new, the haters came. You know, people are going to make things into something that they're not. They've made us into monsters when we are not the monsters. I'm so glad y'all could be here. When truly we want to reflect and uplift the communities that reflect and uplift us. I love getting to see him interact and be with other people who understand differences. We do have a DJ in the room. Come on. A lot of the time some kids just kind of pass by him because he's different. Everybody say love. Oh, isn't love a nice word? I'm hoping that my child is able to see herself in the stories and is able to see herself, too, in the diversity of storytellers. Do we all feel good? So much fun. Yeah, the energy here is just really lovely. Do you want to get some wiggles out? Stick your fingers out and wiggle your fingers around. To show her that family can mean a whole host of different things and there's no one definition of kind of what it is other than it's people who love you. We have to be community to fight back. We have to be family. We have to come together. What does a mom do when her son is mistreated? If you have privilege, if you have a platform, use it to uplift someone else. Support someone else who's doing the work. I am so happy to always share with y'all. I hope they become commonplace. I hope story hours are no longer the forefront of protest. And I hope we have many more story hours to come. Learn and love. Always, always love. Now joining us is Jonathan Hamilt, executive director of the nonprofit Drag Story Hour, an organization that aims to create diverse, accessible, and culturally inclusive programming for kids to express their authentic selves. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. How did Drag Story Hour get started? Well, you know, Drag Story Hour is exactly like it sounds. It's drag storytellers that read to kids in public schools and libraries. And we founded our organization in San Francisco in 2015 um, at the Harvey Milk Branch in the Castro. Wow, what a place. I mean, literally standing on the shoulders of giants when you're in the Castro in San Francisco. Um, and a lot has changed since then, right? So help us understand how drag can create a positive, creative inspiration for kids. Yeah, you know, drag is a traditional art form rooted in queer culture. And we use that art form to convey literacy and love and to help kids experience otherness at a younger age. Uh, we want kids to celebrate the fabulous diversity in our world. And the more kids see and experience other walks of life and other cultures, they're going to be uh, more equipped as adults to handle any situation that happens. For better and for worse, drag has been kind of thrust in the spotlight right now, right? And so when you think about the change that you want to make in this world, what does that look like? For so long, queer culture has been uh, push into the shadows of society. And now, you know, we're giving a chance and a space to come out in the daylight into our communities and help support other people and provide positive queer programming for families, um, you know, that want us around. What message do you have for the drag artists who are showing up in this way? You know, it, it's really hard to show up as your authentic self when there's lots of, you know, forces and people that don't want you to exist or want to legislate us out of existence. So, uh, you know, um, hate against queer people and against drag artists have always been the case, but it's just being shown to light in uh, mainstream media. But, you know, keep going and, you know, know that there's an entire community of people um, supporting you and that love what you're doing. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. To learn more about Drag Story Hour and to find a chapter or event near you, visit dragstoryhour.org. And be sure to join PFLAG in Reading with Love by visiting pflag.org slash readwithlove. PFLAG helps parents find the language and the tools to help support their LGBTQ plus children. Let's meet a non-binary teen from Chicago whose PFLAG parents help them find their identity and their joy. 
I'm Ray Bean Hemmer. I first came out as a lesbian around the age of 13 when I had a crush on a girl for the first time. And then I started looking into like LGBTQ culture online and saw a bunch of masculine lesbians with short hair and wearing pants all the time. And I was like, that looks cool. I experimented even more. Now I like wearing both feminine and masculine things. I really like cargo pants. I love pockets. <laughs> Um, but I like wearing makeup and these little facial stickers. I love having colorful hair. I'm loud and proud personified. But when I discovered that I was non-binary one night, I was like, hmm. Because I, I, I was basically just worried that they wouldn't understand because it's more complicated. At that point, I'd been a girl for 15 years and people are used to calling me a girl. They're used to calling me by a certain name and certain pronouns. And changing that is really difficult. And I know that my parents have put a lot of work into that. Like recently there was a couple of people that tried to get some LGBTQ books banned in my school district. And they immediately started working really hard to get the word out there, get people to write letters into the school board saying, we really appreciate these books being in the libraries and would appreciate if you kept them there. And making sure that there was both sides of the argument were being heard, not just the loud minority that wanted them banned. I felt a calling to want to be involved and advocate for the LGBTQ community. We started uh, with PFLAG not too long after, after uh, Ray came out as lesbian. I think one of the things I've understood the, the most through this journey is that, you know, it's, I can't go to another group of people to understand my child better and what their experience is because their experience is unique. It's just an inspiration still to parents today to stand up for their kids and PFLAG's done amazing work for 50 years, you know, helping get the marriage bill passed and lots of other legislation and supporting thousands of parents. I see it as a support group for like the other side of the coin basically because there's tons of support groups out there for members of the LGBT community, but allies need support too because they're, you know, putting themselves on the line to support us and they need support in return. And parents who want to be good supporters and they want to be allies, but they just don't know they need a resource um, because like we can't break the cycle of people being kicked out for being who they are if we don't teach those parents better. And PFLAG is there to do that. To get involved, visit pflag.org slash advocacy. PFLAG has long had a saying, when you no longer need PFLAG, PFLAG needs you. One parent of a trans child who heard that message loud and clear is now the chairperson of the PFLAG National Board of Directors. Susan Thronson, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. Tell us how you got involved with PFLAG. Well, when my teenage child came out to his, uh, to his father and me seeking help for a gender transition, I turned to PFLAG and I turned to a local chapter. And there I found transgender people, um, their families and other allies, and they, they changed my life and therefore then changed my family's life. And immediately find that sense of community, right, I would imagine. Absolutely. I, I moved from being an ally to a supportive and affirming parent to an informed parent, mm -hmm. and now today an activist for LGBTQ people and those who love them. And you are the first parent of a trans child to serve as the board um, chair yes, of the Black National. Why is this important, especially now? Well, it's so important in so many ways. So back in the late 90s, PFLAG was the first national LGBTQ um, organization to add transgender and gender identity and expression to our mission. And since that time, families like mine have sought the services and community of PFLAG. I have that lived experience of raising a child through a gender transition and yet I also, because that was 15 years ago, have the safety and the time and the capacity now to represent um, the voices of parents who are maybe in the midst of supporting their, their child. Being their able child. to take a step back and exactly. kind of see it with a little bit more closure exactly. and clarity. Right. And yet here we are, right? Anti-trans legislation and violence, especially against trans women of color, um, are at an all-time high. Yes. Um, how do you focus on 
remaining hopeful through all of that. I see the experiences of LGBTQ people. I see especially trans people who have had the opportunity to come from caring, affirming, supportive parents and families and, and see how they are able to achieve their potential and live the lives that they dreamt of. Mm -hmm. That gives me hope. Um, I also take solace in the fact that 20% of Gen Z young adults identify as LGBTQ+. They have loved ones and families. I know the arc of history is with us, even though we are in very challenging times today, but we will prevail. In some ways, it seems like both of those things exist because of each other, that there's Absolutely. this aggressive kind of push Well, if we look at the history of any civil rights movement, we know that periods of great progress have a counter of retrenchment and, and, and uh, retaliation, and that's where we are to now. But we're not going away. <laughs> in fact, PFLAG is the plaintiff in two lawsuits in the yes. state of Texas. Um, this is the first time in your 50-year history that you've served as a plaintiff. It was, all, it was the absolute right thing for us to do. Families in Texas were being investigated for child abuse for simply providing essential health care for their transgender youth. Healthcare providers are at risk of losing their livelihood, their license, and other, and, and other criminal penalties for being the providers of this necessary healthcare. PFLAG families live in Texas. We had to stand together with them to be able to say, no, this cannot be a decision where politicians get to use our children as political wedges when lives are at stake. What would you say to another affirming parent who really wants to take that first step but doesn't really know what that might look like? Yeah, uh, there's, and, and I think that's where many of us come in. We're allies, we're supportive, but we don't yet know how to navigate. And that's exactly where an organization like PFLAG steps in and does its best work. Because one-on-one -on -one with other family members, you have the safety, the comfort of being able to say, tell me about your experience and how did you deal with this? Um, ask the questions that you might be afraid to ask somewhere else and, and get an honest answer back. Um, everyone's journey is different. Everyone's family situation, um, their, their, their situation with their loved one is different. And, and through this, this, this community of peers, um, we're able to really um, provide the resources, provide the pathways and, and the encouragement. Um, for how to get through what can be a very challenging time. Is that the advice you would have given yourself 15 years ago? Exactly what I gave my advice. Unfortunately, this time I listened. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Susan, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Celebrate LGBTQ plus affirming parents and parenting people with a gift to PFLAG National. Text PFLAG to 41444 or visit pflag.org slash parent day to give. PFLAG has given voice to hundreds of thousands of LGBTQ plus people and their families nationwide over the past 50 years, including someone whose voice is their livelihood. Fortune Feimster has found massive success in the entertainment industry as a comedian and actress, but she couldn't have done it without her proud PFLAG mama. PFLAG's Liz Owen recently spoke with Fortune about her family's experience with the organization. Fortune is a queer person who grew up in North Carolina. How aware were you that there might be resources right there in your own community that you and your loved ones could lean on as you navigated all the challenges that LGBTQ plus people face? I honestly had no idea what resources were available, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that I didn't actually come out until I moved to Los Angeles. Um, and then that's when uh, I started to be more aware of organizations like PFLAG and different resources that were available. But yeah, growing up, I had no idea uh, who I even was. Your mom, Ginger, was the president of PFLAG Gaston. How did she and you first become aware of and then involved with PFLAG? She was the one who, who sought out uh, the organization back home and joined at first as, you know, just a parent that was wanting to support their, their kid and eventually just kept getting more and more involved until eventually she started uh, running the PFLAG Gaston. How has having a supportive parent in your life alleviated some of the challenges you mentioned? So the fact that my mom and my entire family was so supportive meant so much to me. I didn't have to hide who I was in front of them. I didn't have to be worried that 
our relationship would be over. Um, you know, it's an adjustment at first, of course, you know, my mom was just concerned about my life being more difficult, uh, but never was uh it was never a, a situation of like i don't want you to be who you are what advice do you have for those folks who might not have that support that has to be some of the greatest pain that anyone in our com in community can experience is is being disowned or not having the love and support of your family that's a terrible feeling and so you know i i find people like that tend to look for other people to sort of step in and a P flag is just like the the parents and the allies are so important to us when you see them like in a pride parade walking it does give you that like warm feeling of like oh it's so amazing to see parents being supportive and being accepting so you know p flag is a resource for parents who have no idea what to do when they find out their child identifies as lgbtq plus i imagine there are people today watching who've been hesitant maybe for whatever reason to connect with their local p flag chapter what would you say to them um i mean i totally understand that because you know it's um all new you know the whole thing's new you're you're uh, adjusting, like I said, your expectations. Um, you're kind of relearning who your kid is, I think, uh, because they're learning who they are as they go and as they evolve. Uh, they welcome people with open arms and uh, very quickly get to know you, learn about you, learn about your your family, your, your, your child. Um, so I'd say of all the places to go, uh, that one, that one should feel the least nerve wracking because it's a very welcoming group. So we're celebrating our 50th anniversary here at PFLAG this year. Why do you think we've endured for so long and what motivates you to continue being involved with PFLAG? Its mission is to um, spread love and acceptance. And that's a pretty amazing mission, right? There's nothing but positivity coming from it. We're kids and we want the, the, the love and acceptance of our, of our family, of our parents and uh, any any organization that's helping that relationship to continue and to be positive and to grow um, is a really important one. Fortune, anything you'd like to say directly to all of these wonderful PFLAG parenting people watching today? I would say to any parent um, who has a child in our community, yeah, to get involved, to, to continue spreading awareness, um, because just in the act of acceptance, and love, you know, that shows your neighbor, oh, you know, that, that sets an example for them. It's not some scary thing that um, should be, you know, looked at negatively. Like, you know, so-and-so loves their kid no matter what. That's a, that's a good example to set. And I feel like that kind of stuff spreads, you know, that positivity, that acceptance spreads. So, um, yeah, if you have anyone in the community, uh, be it a child, a sister, a brother, a cousin, a friend, a coworker, um, go ahead, start that, you know, that, that acceptance, being an ally, doing what you can to help the community because we certainly need it. Thanks so much, Fortune. Of course, it's my pleasure. This show has been a powerful reminder that leading with love and taking action can make a positive difference, even in the most challenging of times. We hope you've been inspired by what you've heard and that you'll think of PFLAG as a resource for your own family and community. You can find them at pflag.org. Now to all the PFLAG parenting people, the parents and teachers, the drag artists and librarians, coaches and community leaders, thank you for working to ensure that every LGBTQ plus person feels safe, celebrated, empowered, and loved. And thank you for being with us for PFLAG Parent Day. If there's anything I want y'all to get from this whole presentation, it is allyship. I can't go to another group of people to understand my child better and what their experience is because their experience is unique. Having a safe space is one of the biggest assets that we can have. Allies need support too, and PFLAG is there to do that. No book made my child become transgender. They've made us into monsters when we are not the monsters. We're not gonna run away. We're gonna stick it out. We want to reflect and uplift the communities that reflect and uplift us. PFLAG's done amazing work for 50 years. Anyone is welcome. 
that wants to be welcomed, that walks in the door. Learn and love. Always, always love.